Hey everyone, got myself some Spark gameplay here. I duo queued with a friend and we are on Spunky Arena. And we're starting off having with some problems here with the Combat Girl. If you are playing Defender, you want to heal your team, especially as Combat Girl, right before the game starts, be healing them the entire way through because that will give them armor, which gives you a serious advantage over the over the other team if they don't have armor. And if they do have armor, then you are kind of SOL. So, this is a common spot right here, being sort of uh, pushed back in the right lane. Uh, for the time being, I'm just going to go ahead and pick off uh, turrets and stuff. Attacking them really won't do anything but give them juice. I'm not really going to get a kill at this point, so I'm just going to focus on uh, bots and uh, combat girl cats. Just playing it safe, sitting back. If this happens a lot in Spunky, you will have... Um, right now, we have... The lanes are pretty even right now with the two sides on uh, right lane but in many cases you will be by yourself or with another person against three or four people and you just have to play it as safely as possible just uh, hang back here poke out every so often kill bots and make sure you're not getting uh, grabbed by veterans and just every so often going through getting uh, make sure you're getting a uh, kill credit for those uh, shady bots and pick off as many uh, slim bots as you can right here I blind them so they'll back off a little bit while I level up uh, my skills and for the most part, this is a pretty, pretty passive play here. Uh, soon here, we we'll actually go for a we'll actually go for some kills as they overextend. It is, uh, despite having people caged in like this, you have to remember that they are next to a, uh, a turret, and that they can easily uh, punish you if you overextend. And combat girl and assault me this is really difficult. They can easily uh, harass you and uh, punish you for killing bots by throwing out uh, mines and poking out occasionally do combat lasers. So if you are on the defensive side, you have to watch out for that. Don't get too greedy with the bots. Remember that you uh, get credit for the shady bots if you just kill in the last five seconds. It's only the slim bots that don't give you credit, and they aren't worth a terrible amount of money. If your other teammates get them, that's fine. Just make sure someone's killing them. Right here, the comic girl. She is overextending. She is weak. I'm going to take a risk here and go for her, and it actually ends up paying off. This was very risky, but the combat girl was actually healing me so I was able to survive. I got out of there as fast as possible because I was afraid of a bomb or something, but it turns out the assault also overextended in trying to save the combat girl and they both paid the price for that. So I know it's tempting to try to help teammates. It's a team-based game, but sometimes if a teammate does something stupid, then uh, you have to you have to back off. You can't save them from their stupidity because they'll get you killed as well. Just a gauge situation and uh, See what you can see if there's anything you actually can do. Think about it. Don't just rush in trying to help a teammate because in many cases you'll just die yourself. And one of the biggest things about this game is their their veteran. He's pretty good. He also gets uh, at least he gets well fed off of our combat girl. And it becomes a problem in the later game because as an enforcer he can really he was, he's a really uh, big bully during the uh, annihilator parts of the game. And right here. Obviously, it's very hard to ring out a assault, especially on this map. So, but however, the damage he takes and my level advantage uh, lets me able uh, lets me uh, easily go down there and pick him off. And now, where things are a little bit easier out right here, a little more breathing room, and that turret is vulnerable, so we can now push up here. Uh, this part of the game went well, so we can just push up and start going for that uh that turret. And make sure you're always picking off uh. What are they called? Uh, combat kitties, I think. Yeah, combat cats. They're a little bit harder to see sometimes than the uh, fire base that the support lays down. But if she uses, if she pops her uh, skill for those, they'll rip through bots and players pretty fast. Here, I go ahead and I pop juice because I want to ensure that turret will go down. As I get a few hits off other players, but in the end, I decide here to back off. There's three of them. The veterans is oh, level over me, so I back off. At this point, we're going to go ahead and get ready to go down there and uh, take care of the Annihilator. But first, I'm going over here. One nice thing about Spark on this map is that you can quickly switch between lanes, no problem. So I go down here. Didn't enter the uh, Annihilator area with my team. I decided to go up here, kill a few more bots. I had to kill one more wave off. I entered the uh, Annihilator a little late sometimes, depending on the situation. Just to make sure our lane's uh, nice and pushed up. If your lane is pushed up farther... That means losing the elevator is less of a less of a big deal because your new waves of bots have time to actually get up there and you'll be pushed back so much. 
So just keep that in mind. It's not always a good thing to do because it does leave your team down a man for uh, Annihilator fights. And here, we realize that the veteran's a threat, so we go ahead and decide to pick him out first. And we go ahead and just bully him. Uh, force him to waste his juice. And at that point, he pretty much goes down to a ton of grapples. And Death Eater does not save him. At this point, with their, with their veteran down, we feel a lot more confident in uh, finishing this off. We go ahead and pick up the rest of their, uh, rest of their members. And that's a pretty easy Annihilator. Uh, a late uh, sticky mine from the assault, which normal, normally would uh, knock you off that, but unfortunately he was too late for that, so we get the first Annihilator, and we start pushing in further. I want to talk about uh, my pr uh, products real quick for Spark. I don't play Spark a whole lot. I, been playing, I just bought him actually this week because they fixed his bugs. Um, he was my first pro I actually played besides support. I played him the most when I first started playing the game, but the glitchiness of his skills uh, were turning me off, so I eventually switched to Wascot. But now that he's been fixing the patch, um, he's not perfect. There's still some bugs here and there, but it's a lot more consistent anyways. At least he's, I find him playable at the very least. As for products I'm using right now, it's a very generic build. Uh, cancel this is very nice on uh, most maps. Like I said, every, just about every pro has a has a, a snare of some type. Uh, there's very few that don't. The map themselves have uh, snares, ejector, chicky, uh, jackbots, all have slows. So cancel this is very nice for a commander to have because getting out is uh, obviously very good when you're deep behind enemy territory. You want to get killed, you want to get out quickly and can't slow this uh, helps with that. Next thing I have is Hot Hands. I'm not the biggest fan of Hot Hands. I find that its damage is not incredibly good, but it is extra damage and it's one of the few products that do give you extra damage. I generally switch between Hot Hands and Critically Late. I find that Hot Hands gives you a stronger a stronger early game where Critically Late gives you a stronger late game and it really just depends on how you're feeling at the time. With uh, Spark I go ahead and go for Hot Hands because Early game, you're also trying for those. You're trying for more grapples because you want to get those ring outs. So, why not get a little extra damage from that if you fail? In some cases, it lets you finish off people. And my last product's Money Magnet. Um, again, Money Magnet is not a product I use super often. Uh, it's nice in uh, pub games like we're playing right now because it helps you. It helps. It gives you an edge to stay above the curve. And with commandos, staying above. The average level is important. It gives you that advantage for ganking. So I find it hard to get rid of this product because not only does it, as other classes you can, or as other pros, you can generally sort of stick. You stick by. You can easily grab most coins. You don't have to worry about it too much. With a commando, you are coming in at odd angles, and you can steal coins from the enemy by using a money magnet. And if you're retreating, you can just grab coins along the way without having to change your path at all. So. I feel that with commandos, it's a, little, it's a bit more efficient sometimes, but uh, it's not a bad product. I just feel that I would rather something gets even more combat efficiency. Sometimes I use insp Inspire, but uh, on the the kill products are a bit dicier because uh, bots sometimes interfere. They get they steal kills from you, and you don't get the effect. But Inspire is a nice product. I do use it uh, quite a bit, but for now I'm just sticking with Money Magnet. Uh, later, I would like to get uh, saving up for Bot Buster right now. I don't think Spark needs Bot Buster. He has incredible, I'll say nerf him in the next patch. He has incredible bot killing power. He does not really need any more. You'll see in the later game, he uh, sort of just melts through bots with his primary and alt fire. To increase that further just seems like a real waste. Another option would be maybe a juice product like a uh, like Spunky uh, Jumpy does give you some weird, uh, it seems like a weird goofy product, but I've actually found uh, Spunky Juice to be uh, quite convenient for certain cases. It allows you to get into areas you couldn't get in normally, and preserving your uh, your escape skill, like you can jump up to this area without having to uh, flash or anything. Just get into weird uh, spots to kill people from without having to blow your uh, your defensive cooldowns. So as for endorsements, uh, right now, as I said in earlier videos, I am running most level 1s with a few 2s here and there, and some whatever I win from prizes. I have a skill recovery, a crit, a fire rate, and I think an, uh, an old HP thing I don't want to use anymore. Uh, layouts. They don't offer a lot, just a small edge. 
I generally use fire rate on commandos. And a lot of pros is just, it's just raw DPS increase. And right here, just going to interrupt this for a second to show that right here, 1v1ing a shows you the level difference. Only one level difference between me and that veteran, but because uh because of that difference, he had a massive advantage there. Uh, enforcers are also very good at uh, soloing commandos if they don't get the if the commando doesn't get the jump. So as you see, that level advantage is very crucial for commandos, which is why I tend to pack money magnet despite not really liking it too much. But yeah, back to endorsements. Like I said before, I'm waiting for them to sort of... Uh, they've been changing endorsements here and there. Like this last patch, it made some major changes. I don't want to waste the money on very expensive products they are going to change soon, so I'm going to just hold off that for now. Just uh, settle very cheap products that give me some sort of boost while not uh, totally breaking the bank. As you see here, I don't think they're actually going to change endorsements that much anyway. And once again, another uh, another Annihilator fight here. I'm going to pick off that Combat Girl. That'll kill any cat she has right now. And here, I I suicide to block the Annihilator. Not always the best choice in many cases. That just means that you have fed someone. Especially uh, how well you're doing in the game also determines how well you want to suicide. If you're uh, dying a lot anyways, you're worth less money. So you might be able to afford to buy some time by throwing your life away. I am like one or second, first or second place on the scoreboard, so committing suicide there is a bad choice in most cases because it means I'm giving the uh, enemy team a lot of money. Uh, it wasn't the veteran, thankfully, because he's uh, very fed right now, and in many cases has been shown to be uh, red over me. But it does give money to their lower level players who need it more and will catch up more, so not the best thing here. I actually uh, do not grab the... Annihilator for two reasons. One, as an enforcer, we they have a sniper, so letting our enforcer take the annihilator means he has more HP, to survive headshots. And two, he's a higher level, and the annihilator does scale based on level, so that means uh, they'll deal more damage to pros, and also give him more feeds since he's already high fit as it is. And that gets our second annihilator here, and we're just gonna. I was hoping that she will be down, but it was not, so I was gonna pick off bots instead. Right here. Our Carl gets hooked. I'm going to go ahead and uh, megahertz them so they can't see where he's going, so he can escape. And it looks like he's going to survive that if he gets out of there. And the further distract, I'm going to head by a bouncer while taking down this turret. The bouncer will keep them up preoccupied while I take down the turret and kill some the bots. There is a sniper right there. He does see me. He gets a headshot off. Unfortunately, can't slow this prox and prevents me from being slowed by the headshot. I'm going to go ahead and finish off that. I want to get as many kills as possible on that. The veteran, he's their their MVP right now, and by killing him, I get uh, more money, and I also hurt their team more. So, when choosing kills, you also want to see uh, who's the better target, because killing the person that feeds over and over again is not obviously getting kills is good, but if you kill the person who's like zero and twelve, you're not really hurting the team that much at all. You're getting a little more experience, you're getting a little bit more money, a little bit more experience, but you're not really hurting their team as much. They've probably learned to cope without that teammate already, so. Try to find the, uh, try to prioritize your targets. Obviously, a better player is getting harder to kill, so sometimes you have no choice. But uh, you can pick them out, pick them out. And right here, uh, scramblers are a good way to shut down the DPS of a, of a spark, just thanks to the fact that he cannot alt fire while they're uh, near him. But we get to clean that up pretty fast. Going down here, setting up again. Like I said, you want to set up turrets if you're if you're a defender. You make sure you set up turrets. Uh, protect your uh behind you so that in case uh in case any sort of commandos come from behind or anyone tries to just uh take you from behind you'll you'll at least uh they'll be started taking damage and they'll discourage them or at least encourage them to attack your turrets and you'll know what's going on like right here i'm going to go in back from behind here i'm going to force him to back off he could probably beat me 1v1 but i have the advantage of the turret i could easily flip him into it which would uh put me at disadvantage and right now you see just how fast uh, Sparks can kill that, can go and kill that uh, Fuji bot right there. And at the same time, I'm going to spawn some, uh, my teammates spawn some more bots, another Fuji wave, so that'll keep the pressure on. Right here, going to use uh, Megahertz. Do not forget that Megahertz does do damage. If you need to finish them off fast without uh, any sort of need for accuracy, a good way to do that is Megahertz. Uh, right here, missed that assault, did not realize he was uh, there. So I passed right by him. That was a Good opportunity for a kill right there, probably, but 
Sometimes you just don't notice things or try to get out of the way. Once again, setting up for Annihilator. A little early here, but uh, Bullseye is a good opportunity to get some uh, some items. As well as uh, free juice, free armor, uh, churros if you need them. So, And of course, he gives out a lot of money if you attack him. So, Always a good idea to pop in there if you have the free time. If the team is, uh, other team is recovering, you can pop in there and gain a little bit of advantage. Once again, right here, Combat Girl, she... The head's in the wrong direction and just like just totally gets her killed. Uh, sometimes you get you, sometimes you get a uh, discord uh, dis uh, discombobulated. You're not sure where you're going when you're getting attacked, but try to keep a try not to panic and keep a straight head and just know where you're going, what area is safe, what area isn't. Um, the jungle's not safe for her because even if she did uh, get away from us, there's a good chance there's a there is a uh, bouncer down there or a blackjack which could easily finish her off if she's low in health. So just keep in mind where you're going. Once again, they're trying to attack my teammates, so I go ahead and give a quick uh, megahertz. And that lets you pick up the kill on the com their combat girl. And just going to go ahead and grab some armor here. And keep uh, pushing that bot wave back. At this point, I have juice, which I really want to use. I'm going to heal up first. While juice does heal you, it's not during. Not while you're taking damage, so I want to be at full power before actually go attacking anything. Once again, easy pick up on that assault. And right now we're looking, we're looking pretty good. Lanes are pretty pushed up. Uh, our top lane probably needs a little bit of work there. I just got a uh, just got pushed, uh, just got cleared out. So I'm heading over there now. Thanks to that veteran, I nearly escaped his grapples by teleporting out of there. So going to head back into right lane because at this point we do have the uh, annihilator. One to push the left the left lane a little bit more, but Nightlighter comes first, so our Carl's here already. He is set up. It's really nice. Our combat girl, she's not on the ball. She is not setting up her cats like she should be. Luckily, Carl is doing so. Got a lot of Carl Juniors in obvious bases they'll go. Unfortunately, they are on the ball. They're ready for it. We have the Megabeth coming down here. Knock my people with her... I think it's her Q. Yeah, her Dervish. I am targeting her probably not the best idea because she can easily uh, move around, but they do take care of that veteran anyways. I should have probably focused veteran first instead of the more mobile character can avoid my attacks, but it worked out anyway. And yeah, watch out when you're in this uh, bottom area as you see the uh, veteran or the assault just flew to his death. Just watch where you're going. Right here, Chicky is going to mess everything up, knocking us back. Again, watch where you're going. As you saw right there, the uh, combat girl fell to her death. I got froze by a trap. But the sniper obviously could not kill me in time, I guess, so he backed off. My bad chance, not quite sure. And that gives us uh, another another annihilator. And if you want to look at um, oop, right up there, the, okay, back here, I was going to mention the uh, reticle for the uh, Voltic, uh, the spike uh, alt fire, but I teleported next order, it got reset. But I go back here sometimes. Uh, I learned this from I believe it was Mbox on the. Uh, Uber forms. This back that little back area is nice to sort of uh, provoke people, and you can get some free ring ads if they're gullible. And also, it's a nice spot to snipe turrets from. I was hoping that maybe their one of their turrets had uh, lost its shield, but it had not. So I was sort of forced to back out there. Could not uh, troll at all. So I went ahead, uh, headed back in the jungle, killed some bots, heading back to right lane. Just see what we need to push. Right now, I'm going to quickly pass through the other lane. Pick off this Megabeth. They have a jackpot pushing heavily. So I'm going to finish off the veteran real quick. Make sure he can't interfere with our... And see right there, there's a level advantage he has. That one level advantage gives him a huge... Uh, a huge uh, stat advantage over me. So watch out when you're fighting a character. Make sure you look at their level and whether or not... Uh, how good you are fighting them. For me, a uh, veteran one level over me is not a... Not an entirely fair fight. At this point, I juice to finish all the bot as quickly as possible. Then I want to take too much damage on our back rocket turret. Tried to use the the uh, Dector will kill uh, turrets, but that one cat bot was too too high up there. So I to spend my money just to kill some bots real quick, just to aggressively push. This combat girl gets out of position, or she gets too aggressive. I'm not sure what she was doing. Maybe going for the ejectors, I guess. But yeah, she pays the price for that. And once again, just going to go ahead and uh, just pulverize these bot waves. I get to, once again get hooked, but I was able to teleport out of there before getting grappled. So just uh, keep your hand ready for on that shift button when you're uh, getting hooked like that. Latency comes into play sometimes, but you do what you can. 
Once again, focusing on bot waves, just really want to push. Want as many clean Fujis to go in as possible. Going to buy juice for that purpose. Not the best use of juice, but because I already killed bots as fast enough as it is, but I really want those uh, bots to go down. Maybe scare them off a bit. At this point now, we have some jackpots coming in, so this game is going to be wrapping up pretty soon here. These jackpots are going to come in, take down these turrets pretty cleanly. Come on both sides, so two players supposed to summon them. Personally, I do not like spending money on jackpots. I feel that uh, they're easily countered by juice, which is like half the cost. So in most cases, if you can afford a jackpot, the enemy team can afford juice. But in this case, they are not paying attention, and they paid the price for it. Their shields are down. At this point, I generally don't attack the, the uh, money ball as a commando. I prefer to just uh, pick off the uh, harass and pick off the enemy team. But in the case of Spark, you probably want to reconsider that because he already gets a lot of damage as it is off of his uh, primary weapon and its alt fire. So I can sort of go in there and attack and do a lot of damage. But I'm just going to go ahead and just protect my team from the other team and uh, we'll finish this off. And that's how a little bit of Spark gameplay for you. Let's see my final score here. I believe it was like uh, 14 or something. Yeah, that's why I don't attack the money ball. I just want to inflate my score. Yeah, both teams did not have the best combat girls, probably new to the game. Um, things to learn there, healing, make sure you're uh, knowing the heal, 17 to 3, yeah, inflated my score a little bit there. And that's the game, I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will see you all next time.